Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to the channel. In my last video, I showed you how to engrave a tumbler with a handle when you don't have full rotation. If the chuck rotary is too close to the work bed that it won't, won't roll underneath, or if you're working with a, a roller rotary and it's just impossible to roll underneath. And I'll link that video, that video up here. But <clears throat> today what I'm going to do is just as a follow-up to that video, show you how we can do the same procedure using a, a roller rotary on a diode laser. And this this roller is a one of the rollers rotaries that have two two long rollers on it, not a four-wheel rotary. I have one of those as well for my diode laser, but this is or for, rather for my CO2 laser. But this is what we're we're going to be working with. So let's start by going into light burn and show you the setup process, and then we'll look at some video footage of, of it actually in, in process. Okay, so just just like my um, 40 ounce template, this is for a, a coffee mug. So here we have, this is the height, let me click on that, 105 millimeters is the height of the mug, and 280 millimeters is the circumference. So this, this is, this line is representative of the tumbler itself, the mug. This center line here is where the handle sits. And then just like on the other one, we have our, our one fourth and our one fourth split the difference from the handle halfway around. So the first thing we had to do is determine the width of our, our safe area. Like I said, I didn't put the text in here, but this piece right here, this red line is what ends up being our safe area. And in this case, it's 55 millimeters across on 55 millimeters in this direction. And I'm just, I've gone long so that we can clear the handle with the, with the laser head. And my laser head on, on this particular diode has a little kickstand on the back for focusing. So I had, I could have gotten closer on the, Back side on the back side because it would have had a little more clearance, but with that kickstand, I had to move it out just this far just to make sure it cleared. So what I did was I I lit, set the tumbler in the rotary, rolled it to where it just hit the handle on one side, made a pencil mark, moved the laser head out of the way, rolled it back the other direction. Leave the laser head back in position. This is this is all with everything turned off. Moved it back in position and rolled it up against, and made a pencil mark there. So that's that's how far I have to have it, bare minimum for clearance, and that ended up being like forty nine millimeters, something like that. But like I said, because of the kickstand and also because I want to have just a little bit of clearance, just in case it slips and I don't want it to crash, I ended up going with a fifty five millimeter dimension side to side to get around that handle. So once we got to that point, I made a box centered on the, on the handle and I just made sure that it was plenty long enough that it would, that it would actually go past and not crash into the laser head here or here. So the laser head, when it runs, when it frames it, it's going to run out here. The tumbler is going to turn and it's going to run back on this side and then go back to home. So we'll take a look at that process here. Start the framing. You see there it's going, going by on the one side. And it's got a, a couple millimeters clearance there. And it switches directions, rotates, and comes back across. And there we have a successful rotation. Now that I didn't get it right the first try, I took took a few a few experiments of messing with the size. I actually started larger and and snuck up on it. I started like sixty. Yeah, I did. I my first my first run was at sixty millimeter, and I kept reducing it to where I felt it was tight, but not too tight. And that's how I ended up with fifty five. 
So then the next thing we had to do is figure out how much of an actual working area we have from when the handle hits, when it rotates over and the handle hits on the, the mechanism from the rotary from one direction to the other. And that was another just experimental. I ran it all the way over against. And then I looked at, in the move tools here, looked at the positioning of my y-axis, where the y-axis was at at that time. Mark that number down. And using the jog controls with on continuous jog, I just rotated the tumbler all the way around till the handle just about hit on the other side. And that's how I came up with this dimension of, this one here was 170 millimeters, is the largest that we can possibly do before the handle hits on the, on the mechanism. So if you take a look from hundred from this frame here, which we can't, we cannot go past that. We can try to go any more, any more than that. And the handle's going to hit and just, it's going to slip. So between that dimension and where our 90 degree lines are is not a lot of space. In fact, let's measure this out from here to there. It's 13 millimeters. So it should be the same on this side. 13 millimeters, yeah. One of these might be slightly out of, out of touch, but so what that comes down to is the largest diameter circle, if you don't want to do a circle, the largest diameter you can do is 26 millimeters. So double, you know, you can't be any, anything beyond 13 millimeters off this direction to the line or 13 millimeters off this direction to the line. What I ended up doing was I did one, I did two circles, uh, was 14 millimeters. Yeah, these are, these are 14 millimeters. They're, they're 28 millimeters circles. So anything larger than that, and it's going to hit. We'll turn those on. And then just like I did in the other video, I made another small dot right there, just right, basically on center, close to center. That's just a little half millimeter circle in a fill mode so that when the laser comes by, the laser's going to start down here at the origin. It's, the tumbler's going to rotate. It's going to come up here and do this one first. Then it's going to come down here, wrap around, and come back up and do the second one. And what I didn't do that I probably should, that I should have done, and what I told you to do in the other video, is I didn't turn off the... Um, end position, return to finish position at that time. I have it off now, but so you'll see that it's going to come up, burn the circle, come down, wrap around. That allows the uh, tumbler handle time to clear and come back up and hit this one. So let's just watch that real quick and then we'll wrap it up. This is just going to be a short video. There it goes, it's in position, it's starting to engrave. And it's going down around that uh, sideways target and back up. And finished. Now what I did here is I had to figure out the distance where I wanted the tumbler to be from the edge of the rotary for repeatability, and I just chose an arbitrary number of 50 millimeters to go from the edge, the, from this section of the rotary to the end of the tumbler. So this line that I 
laid out for the handle and also for where my extents are is actually 50 millimeters from the base of my tumbler in light burn. Then I had to measure from there to my dot, which is another 59 millimeters. So I knew I had to, I knew I had to be 59 millimeters from the this edge of my rotary to where this dot is for my origin point. So I laid I laid my ruler down off the back back of the rotary and positioned the laser head until it got to it was right at 59 millimeters. And that's where I set my origin point. And I had previously honed the machine before doing that, so I knew I would I was have a repeatability factor because on this on my spoil board I have um, cutouts for my, my rotary feet to sit in. So it's always in the same position. So that, that ended up being that, that that point right here was 34, mil, 34 on the x-axis. And I just ran the laser head to that point, set my origin, and I was ready to run the job. Now a tip I have for you with this style of ro roller rotary and this tumbler is I actually used a lacrosse ball, which has a fairly good amount of weight to it, put it inside the cup and put the lid on and I aligned a little ear on the lid with the handle so that it doesn't interfere with the rotary at all. And that just helps, gives a little more weight and helps it to grab onto the rollers a little bit better. And then here you see the finished product with my two circles perpendicular to the handle. So I hope if you couple this video with the other video that I referenced in the beginning, this will all make sense to you. I didn't want to make another 20, 25 minute video on this, on the same process, just on a different machine. So if it helped you out, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you next time.